this is the market outlook of XRP and it's going to be really important for you to understand this. Right now, XRP just lost two of its support levels and it's moving towards the downside. The momentum is there to the downside. When you're looking at Bitcoin, there's a short term chart, but it do show you that it came to 21,350 and it's slowly bouncing back. Maybe a retest of 22 is what's happening there. But then again, you're looking at XRP and it's accelerating to the downside. Now here, we are looking 4.35 as a range of support, which is okay. But then again, you need to understand that we have talked about this. The RSI is moving to the downside. We have a little bit more room to the downside to reach this level. Now that's a three-day chart. It's looking for like last couple of years to understand what's happening in the market. And then you get to see like, okay, mm, we are moving down. We didn't manage to break this to the upside. When we were here, I did point out if we drop, we are going to come to 0 0.33, 0 0.34. Right now, it does show that there is a higher probability for that. Now, can we confirm this with the Bitcoin dominance? Right now, the Bitcoin dominance is at the range which we discussed in the last couple of videos. So we came up there. Then you are looking at the altcoin market and saying like, okay, mm, we hit a resistance, but we do have some support levels. Now, RSI shows like we have some more room to the downside. So we need to see what's going to happen in that front. But the MACD is on the positive side on a three-day chart, which is bullish. Because for XRP, it just tried to get onto the positive range, but that didn't work out well. So the entire market is being shaken with some of these news. But not every coin is actually showing that negativeness. You know, if that was the case, you should have first seen how things are evolving just with BUSD. Right now, it's still closer to a dollar. Now, if you drop below 0.97, you can then say, okay, we are losing the peg there. People are moving money out. You know, all that kind of scenarios will evolve. But right now, that's not happening. So it's really important for us to look like what is the outlook for XRP for the next couple of months or the next couple of days because soon then you're literally watching negative momentum accelerating. Welcome to the Sinefic Investor Family where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10 person of this world. Yes, we are getting some bad news but understand this is going to be a macro week because tomorrow we are gonna get the CPI. Now, every month we are getting this information, but what's important to understand, the expectations for the household income dropped by 1.3 percentage point. That is to 3.3%. The largest drop in nearly 10 year history. So households are losing money. And on the other side, you can see this. Americans anticipate income growth to slow and inflation to stay elevated. So that means the consumer's expectation for this market is losing ground. But then we get information like this. Um, mm, that does not actually match well. Right? When you look at this and you're like, okay, then what did they actually publish back then? So for the news narrative, if they're publishing something showing positivity and then afterwards they are revising it, not a lot of people focus on that. So we are literally waiting to see what's coming next because huge CPI revisions has been taking place if this is to be true and that does not look good because right now today the markets actually went a little bit higher in the stock side of it, right? And they close, they expecting something positive for the next day. But when you look at the dollar, it shows you like it's weighing to the downside actually. Dollar slowing down inside this pattern it's not that bullish meaning that's still a bull flag here we have not yet broken to the downside if we do that's a positive news for the assets but right now that's not the case so when we are looking at the altcoin market we can argue that yes we are right now at a range of support here but what if we wick lower to the moving average that's a 21 day moving average on a three day chart and it happens to be the previous level of support. So we still have a possibility that some of these assets are going to be highly volatile as the Bitcoin dominance increases, right? That is going to be a key factor if you are zooming in to see like what literally is happening. This for me, it looks like 
the ladder to the skies actually so it is literally climbing up each time it correct back down to the moving average then bounces back to the upside so next one you are literally focusing on 42 42.5 range of the dominance now again we go back to the market and we are like now we are slowing down from that 1.1 trillion a little bit not a huge movement but still a little bit which is worth to note because on the other end you see bitcoin is at a support and we are watching whether we are losing that support or not right we came to that support couple of times but we then bounced this is binance where we are looking at the real time charts looking at this now there is a huge possibility now this can actually turn out to be a three candle continuation pattern for sure so the price can still actually come all the way down towards 21600 21500 and then the next day bounce back up so yeah that's a hourly candle so you're talking about next couple of hours so this candle if it managed to close inside this range now you can turn bullish and say like okay mm, most likely the next candle will be there and will go upside now why am i talking about that Current correction here is expected. This, this shorter term moving average, which is here, 70, and then the 25 is now turning positive, meaning the 7 is crossing the 25 to the upside. And whenever we see this, we get to actually watch the opposite action. We've discussed that, through that a lot of time. When we cross to the downside, you get the price going up and then continuing towards that direction. So right now, you're getting a cross to the upside, but the price is coming down. And then what happens? Usually it follows the direction of the short term moving average here, that seven, which we are observing. Now, this is ultra short term. So we are not talking about a bounce to 50,000. Instead, we are looking for 22,000. And if that breaks, then all the way back up to the retest of this range, close to 22, 23, that range, 22,500 to 23,000 is going to be that range. Fine. So if Bitcoin is able to do that here, now you are going to get some relief in the altcoin market because this is your support zone. And if you can maintain that bullish narrative saying, okay, we've corrected enough, we are going back up, that's positive. But for us in the XRP, it's really concerning to actually watch this, right? You can actually go in different narratives. You can actually go take, say, for example, a Haken Ashi chart where on a daily you're negative, which is actually something bad. On a three day you're negative, which is again something bad because Haken Ashi kind of gives you a narrative of next candle, which is going to be next three days, is most likely going to be in red. That does not feel good. So we want to know what next day look like. Most likely it shows like it's also going to be in red. Then most likely the next 12 hours. So as you zoom in, you get a narrative of, yeah, we are still weakening out here. Even up to a 30 minute chart, it's showing you now the downside is still there. So I've been following this from some time because one of the biggest investment in my portfolio is XRP, right? That's a long term portfolio based on the fundamentals. But watching it dropping through all these supports on the short term, the long term, it does not feel great. But if you are looking to buy more, now you're going to get certain opportunity. But don't jump into buying more unless you get a confirmation that this is about to hold because that support it's ranging from a long time so if you get a bounce from here making a higher high getting a confirmation that is going to be a beautiful buy if not that's going to be a bad decision right now yes you're buying an asset and you don't care about the short-term volatility but if it actually drops to point two that will not be something good to look at, right? So we are observing that on a weekly, XRP on a Hikinashi is uh, right now showing you that it is turning red, which actually means next one week is going to be in that scenario. Now, don't misunderstand. You go to look at Bitcoin, you also see something same. It is red right now, showing next one week can be green. You go towards a daily and it then suggests we are still in red, we have not yet moved on to the positive territory. Only when you reach next 12 hours, it kind of shows you, okay, there is a possibility that the next 12 hours can be positive. Now, I want to actually look at what's happening in the price and the RSI. The price is showing you that it is trending to the downside with a new lower low at a time when the RSI suggests I'm um, diverging here. RSI is not accepting that the strength is reducing, rather 
it kind of point us towards an area where bulls are increasing and they are doubling down. We don't know whether the short-term bulls can manage to kick out the long-term guys, which usually never happens. So what we want to see is whether the short-term guys can actually push this above this level of resistance. Now, this particular pattern has been playing out on a lot of different assets, which happen to break to the upside. So we are still having the hope that Bitcoin can manage to break higher and come back up to test this level. Now, yeah, that's going to be a short-term little movement day, but that's again a positive one, right? Because in the market right now, you're looking for like, you know, what are these coins are actually moving? And you're looking for like, you know, Maker, BNX, CRV topping the list, for the day and we have the call on you know maker saying this is slowly turning bullish then the crv you know but right now imagine you're going to look at crv you actually want to actually see like what literally is happening with that asset which is pushing it to the upside right so one of the factor which you would be looking at is the rsi for sure the strength actually showed you it reached this yeah. level which was really close to the all-time highs here which is actually super bullish in uh, my thought process. So when I'm actually looking at this, I will actually point towards, okay, this was his support, which turned into a resistance here. Right now we are there. Mm -hmm. And the level of strength last time when we were at that support was here, 53. We actually went to 76, which point us towards the all-time highs or close to that range. So I believe there is enough strength in CRV right now and it is actually trying to make a pattern. So if we go look back at the same pattern which we were discussing, three days suggest, okay, we still have corrections. We've came up, we have some level of corrections pending. But the daily then suggests you that, okay, we corrected a little bit, I'm trying to go back up. Now, one thing which is key and technical for me is that the price should be above the 200, the 221 moving average, not 221, 21, my mistake, slip of tongue. So. If the price is above the 21 day moving average and it's green, that's a positive signal. I at least consider that way. And right now the price is trying to do that. Look at the volume. It's slowly increasing compared to all these days when we were running up. So we do get that convergence in that point, which is actually a beautiful thing to watch. Right now when you're actually putting on things like this, you're like, okay, if RSI can break through this, that's a positive scenario. You go in, Look at next 12 hours, that's beautiful. You go in, look at next four hours, that's actually brilliant. Because it actually shows you there are potential opportunities in the market which you can take benefit of. But make sure you understand what the RSI suggests to you, what the MACD suggests to you. Because if you enter and that start to drop, sometimes, you know, ultra short term, that can happen. But if there is no news narratives happening in the market, then most likely, following the rules can give you some certainty. Now, you do have to keep things on your understanding because market can be so volatile, which it has been doing from some time, it can actually go against you, right? So you need a backup plan. You need to know where the supports are and you need to know what the average true range for that day is or even the worst case scenario. You need to actually keep an understanding on that. See, when I'm looking for like, where should I exit a trade? If it's going against me, I look for a support which is strong. Then I look for like, okay, during the worst days, what's the volatility like? If that's minus 20%, I'm like, okay, mm, I'll put my stop loss minus 20 percentage down the actual support range. That can be a weirdest thing if you are listening to that the first time. But for me, that kind of works. And, you know. If you are a high risk guy, you can follow that. If your risk tolerance is much lower, you can just put your stop loss just below the range of last low. But, you know, keeping this would actually literally mean like you actually put that all the way down somewhere here for this instance, right? If you're considering this area and here you're looking for the recent low here, which would be here. And then you put that to the next level. So each asset would have different narrative. And that's one of the reasons why we actually go through this. We actually go through the update of all these different assets to understand what they are showing you right now during this volatile times. Because it can actually help in a way for you to understand where the support is, mm -hmm. what the outlook generally is, is it actually changing completely bearish? Because you need to actually understand some of these assets are 
showing you negative momentum. We should not lie in the market. But the other stuff is some of them are reaching the support and slowly turning, which is actually a positive stuff. But keeping our eye on Bitcoin, it does mean that on daily, it does show you like, okay, it can actually move to the downside. So short term, yeah, we may actually see some palm going up, but we still have to invalidate that bearishness. We need to go through certain levels, which is going to be 20 to 700, 20 to 800. If we manage to break through that level, it's going to be really great for the bulls out here. And as soon as you see a break of this level, say just 22,000, now that's not too far from here, we are at 21,700. So when Bitcoin actually does that, it can do that like this, it happens, right? Because look at this, the downside momentum was higher here, now we are consolidating. Last time that happened here, we consolidated, we followed through to the downside. So if you are looking for the thought process of A, B, C, that's already completed. Now what we want is a new bottoming pattern, which actually pushes the price above this level. If that happens, it's going to be great. Because again, you are looking through all these assets and understanding the pattern, which actually suggests you some of these assets are above a critical range. Now, you know, looking at a stable coin bouncing like this doesn't make us happy in this market. But again, this is the crypto market. So again, guys, if you are getting value from this video, please do hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have another three to five minutes more, please do visit this channel of mine where we talk about life, success and how to push yourself to reach financial freedom. That's it for today, guys. I'll meet you on the next video. Bye-bye.